Let's have a look at interlocking stabilized soil blocks, or ISSBs in short, and machine cut stone blocks. The two are walling materials, and you may be wondering which is the better option between the two. Should you go for ISSBs or stone blocks? Let's try to answer this question in this video. There are four components that make up ISSBs. They are the interlocking component, the stabilized component, the soil component, and the block component. I'll go over each component briefly, but it's good to know that there are previous videos where I've talked about ISSBs in more detail. Links to those videos are in the description below. Starting off is the interlocking component. These blocks have interlocking grooves that make connecting one block to the next one easier and faster. The interlocking component also removes the need to apply mortar between the blocks, which, as you've guessed, is a major advantage with ISSBs. The second component is stabilization. Because these blocks are made out of soil, they need something that makes them stronger, something that transforms these soil blocks into walling blocks. That something is cement, which is the stabilizer added to ISSBs. Because of the chemical properties of cement, it allows the soil to bond together within each block, giving them structural strength. Without cement, the blocks would just crumble and fail. The third component is soil. Soil forms the largest percentage of ISSBs. For example, a typical mixing ratio between cement and soil is one bag of cement to six wheelbarrows of soil. The soil is obtained from quarries and is usually fine in nature, and most contractors here in Kenya prefer to use that soil. It's usually gray in color, which resembles the color of stone blocks. With that said, you can use the soil on your site. Red soil gives a red color to your blocks, while gray soil gives a gray look to your blocks. The only soil that isn't used with ISSBs is black cotton soil. It shrinks and swells in volume, which damages the blocks. The last component is blocks. There are three types of ISSBs. One, the straight standard format block that is usually six inches in width. Two, the wide format block that is 9 inches in width, and 3, the curved format block that is used in circular walls, septic tanks, and water tanks. To make these blocks, machines are used. There's the manual ISSB machine that uses manual power, and there's also the hydraulic machine. The latter can produce more blocks than the manual one, and can either be diesel or electric powered. Here in Kenya, machine-cut stone blocks are an extremely popular building material. These blocks get their name from the machine that cuts them at the quarry. They are obtained from natural stone and are cut into the required thicknesses. The three thicknesses you can choose from are 1. The 4-inch block 2 the 6 inch block and 3 the 9 inch block. The thickness you want is determined by your project's design and your budget. These blocks are usually grey in colour but these can depend with each individual quarry. Here we look at three different aspects you need to consider before making your decision. The first aspect is aesthetics, the second one is your budget and the third aspect we look at is practicality. So let's get started with the first aspect, aesthetics. Your wall greatly influences the overall appearance of your house. An ISSB wall will give a different look to a stone block wall. Let's assume that you don't want to plaster and paint your entire exterior wall. You want to achieve a stone or ISSB wall look to your home. So choosing between the two boils down to aesthetics how you want your house to look like. An ISSB wall won't have a cement joint in between because of how they interlock, which is not the case with stone blocks as they require mortar to hold them in place. You can also achieve a brick-like look if you decide to use red soil to make your ISSBs. With stone blocks, they can be sanded to achieve a smooth look to your wall. 
you can apply some black paint between the joints to create an interesting contrast between the blocks. All in all, consider how you want your house to look like because these two materials will give different finishes afterwards. Your budget plays a major role when choosing your construction material. With stone blocks, where your site is located greatly influences how much these blocks will cost. That's because of transport. The further you are away from a productive quarry, the more these blocks will cost. Also, these stone blocks are heavy, with a 9-inch block weighing the most. So if your project requires lots and lots of blocks and is located far away from a quarry, then you're going to incur lots of transport costs. This factor can stretch your budget and on the extreme end can cause your project to stall. The same with ISSBs. Even though they are more affordable, you'll still need to budget for them properly. You'll need to hire an experienced ISSB contractor, import soil to your site if yours is black cotton soil, and buy cement for stabilization. You'll also need to decide between using a manual or hydraulic machine. The latter can produce 3,000 blocks on a productive day, while the manual machine can make 400 blocks per day. It's cheaper to hire the manual machine, but the hydraulic diesel-powered machine produces way more blocks per day. This saves on time, and as we all know, time is money. Another thing, stone blocks are generally bigger in terms of surface area than ISSBs. This means you'll need less stone blocks than ISSBs to cover the same area. So that's an advantage of stone blocks, which affects your budget. The aspect of practicality is an important one to think about. For example, if your project is located within an arm's reach of a quarry, then it makes sense to build using stone blocks. The cost of transporting these blocks to your site will be much less. If you're building rental properties like apartments or bedsitters, for example, you can use stone blocks because you can get them to your site quickly. Once they are extracted at the quarry, it's only a matter of loading them onto lorries and bringing them back to your site. Now, if you want to build using locally available materials, then it's more practical to use ISSBs. You can use the soil excavated from your foundation to prepare these ISSBs. You can then hire an ISSB contractor who will come to your site with his machine and make the blocks for you. This helps you save on transport costs. ISSBs are a good fit for residential projects like your house for example. They'll also make your wall stand out from stone blocks, giving it a wow factor. If you own an ISSB machine, then it's more practical to make ISSBs for your projects. You can make a business for yourself by becoming an ISSB contractor once you learn how to make ISSBs. When it comes to affordable housing, interlocking stabilized soil blocks are usually the best fit walling material. As long as you use the soil on your site, it's an affordable way to make blocks for your walls. But the main issue affecting ISSBs and other alternative building technologies is perception. Despite the benefits of ISSBs, they're still not as popular as stone blocks. If you'd like to learn more on ISSBs, then watch the following video.